New tropical cyclone forming off the coast of eastern India on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for December 2nd. Well, things are quietening down in general across the world of tropics, but two new systems look like they're on the way, with maybe a third one later on down the line. 78 storms have formed so far this year around the world were code yellow for India for this potential cyclone, which is nearly on its way to forming. It's 182 days until the next hurricane season in the Atlantic. Yep, it's all done, it's all over now. But if we did get an out-of-season storm in December, we'd still be using this year's naming list, so we're going to keep a lookout over there. Similar story for the Eastern Pacific. The season is over. There's still a significant amount of cloud, though, over that region, uh, but nothing that's likely to become a tropical cyclone. No areas of interest, 165 days until next season begins. In the Western Pacific, we have designated a 10% chance at a very low latitude near the eastern Micronesian islands that will start to push towards the west-northwest over the course of this next week and move on towards uh, the Philippine Sea and could develop later on down the line. A near full chance now of a cyclone forming off the east coast of India, the Chennai region and then possibly further north through Andhra Pradesh. All of these areas could be impacted by this cyclone which is nearly formed, it's just waiting on a circulation to become apparent. And in the southern hemisphere another high chance now, 70% on this uh, system in the uh, South Pacific entering the Coral Sea later on next week probably as it initially moves through the Solomon Islands and possibly becomes a substantial cyclone as you'll see on the models later. Satellite imagery right now where you can see the top half of this system in the Bay of Bengal that's what we're looking at there now the coastline that you may be able to see that's the coast of uh, Myanmar and Bangladesh this is looking at the South Pacific uh, the main area to look out, out at there is north of Vanuatu there's a little swirly st thing going on there and something eventually could form out of that fairly soon uh, we think that it could develop into a tropical cyclone within the next three days, maybe even sooner than that if it's lucky. Now this is the North Indian Ocean, we're expecting landfall on this within three days, uh, so preparations really should be beginning for this even though it's not yet a named storm. Uh, the Indian Meteorological Department watching it very closely, they've already called it a depression, but what, from what we can tell on ASCAD at the moment, it hasn't yet fulfilled that requirement, but it is well on its way and it looks like it could be become a substantial tropical cyclone for that east coast of India over the next few days. Radar returns show that just the very edges of it are slowly tracking into the region um, from Chennai there heading towards the northwest. Now this is the South Pacific already traceable that system as it slowly moves towards the Solomon Islands. Uh, really no structure to that one at all just yet. The southern side looking very uh, difficult the northern side really quite bare so it's got a way to go before it actually forms and just a quick look at east of the pacific there a cursory glance not much going on sea surface temperatures though remain strong in the eastern pacific even though the season is over still touching 30 degrees in one or two places off the coast of mexico in the Atlantic then, uh, it's the Caribbean that's still got those warm temperatures, still a little lick of 30 degrees Celsius off the tip of Haiti, but elsewhere those temperatures are starting to cool a little bit further now, but still decent amounts across much of the basin. In the Western Pacific, temperatures still holding on strong in a few uh, parts as well, mainly the Philippine Sea, as is normally the case. South China Sea really cooling now, especially further north. A lot of areas now falling below the 26 degree threshold. North Indian Ocean, the Bay of Bengal has some decent temperatures under that system right now, around 28 to 29 degrees Celsius and remaining above 27 degrees all the way towards its landfall. Southwest Indian Ocean, really warm now off the coast of northwestern Madagascar, up and above 28 degrees Celsius over a large area now. 
And in the Australian region, piping hot there off the coast of the west of Western Australia and the top end Northern Territory, up to 32 degrees and maybe a little bit more on top. Coral Sea, the northern part looking pretty good. Uh, near Vanuatu, those temperatures really pushing up towards 28 degrees as well. And Fiji around 28 to 29. Compared to average, this is what the chart is showing. All the oranges are above average, the blue areas are below average. Western Pacific still has uh, an above average uh, look across the whole basin there, really. Eastern Pacific mostly so, but looking towards the Southern Hemisphere, Southwest Indian Ocean still significantly warm compared to average, not as much as earlier on in the season. Off the coast of Australia looking good, Coral Sea is fairly average. Around Fiji, slightly above average there as well. Southern Hemisphere or South Pacific Oceanic Heat Con Content is through the roof in large parts of the near equatorial zone there and extending into the uh, northern Pacific as well. Still a spot there in the East Pack that has some high content, but the Western Pacific also a few spots there, although it is starting to weaken a little bit. Well, let's see what the computer models have in store for us then. First of all, looking at the Western Pacific for this potential system that might form mainly next week and to the later part of next week actually this system eventually moving on through the western pacific in the micronesian area gradual movement towards the west northwest doesn't really get going until very near the end of that five day period where it could become a tropical cyclone and a late season one in the western pacific but we really are due one because we didn't see anything in november so it looks like we might see something there now the obvious one the indian ocean a very broad system System developing there and there it is tightening up just before making landfall very close to Chennai and then moving inland and then northwards and eventually dying off quite clearly there over Andhra Pradesh as it starts to deteriorate uh, entering those cooler areas further north but uh, certainly as it's making landfall uh, those winds are getting up 50 maybe 60 miles per hour 100 kilometers per hour possible as it makes landfall now this is the southern hemisphere the system that we're watching into the coral sea first of all through the solomon islands around the third fourth of december maybe into the fifth as well and really strengthening as it does so turns and then moves southwards and really strengthens into the coral sea becoming a substantial hurricane strength cyclone um, watch again as it strengthens before it leaves the Solomon Islands, possibly becoming hurricane strength for some of those islands there, and then turning southwards and maybe reaching category 3 status within 5 days. Well, both of those systems will provide significant amounts of rain, but because this one's more immediate, we're going to look at the Indian system. Well, there it is. As it moves inland, most of the rain will look like it's going to be on the southern and western side of the storm itself, at least near the core, with some peripheral high amounts of rainfall extending well towards the northeast, as you can see, towards Visakhapatnam. Now, those uh, rainfall amounts getting up towards 14 inches, that's 350 millimeters near the landfall zone a very high amount possibly for some areas and even inland we could be looking in excess of 10 inches 250 millimeters even in Sri Lanka we could be seeing five inches along the western side of the island that's uh, 125 millimeters and extending quite far inland over parts of central and eastern India there as well uh, now let's take a look at the wind for the medium range in the Western Pacific, this system eventually developing a little bit further near Palau and then moving on towards the Philippines. Uh, potential impacts possible there. Uh, near Typhoon Strength, a very small system though, it capitulates very easily as it swipes the northern tip of Mindanao near the end of that 10 day period and then moves through the southern Visayas region. Now this is quite long range for the Philippine landfall. I wouldn't put much stock into that one just yet. Uh, it's, GFS has been saying stuff like that for a few weeks now actually. Meanwhile, this is a certainly a much more potent threat, this uh, South uh, Pacific system uh, peaking as a Category 3 there. Interestingly, the European model has an even stronger peak, maybe getting the Category 4 status, uh, but certainly from the GFS, this is a Category 3 peak there probably, and then it makes for the coast of Australia, possibly delivering tropical storm force winds from Mackay all the way down to the Brisbane area within that 10-day period. Scan the barcode and that will take you to the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items in time for Christmas as well as our full season individual storm animations on request and our still waiting for Hone t-shirt which doesn't look like Hone is going to appear anytime soon still. 
In the Scilly range, that cyclone does survive its transit through the Philippines and looks like it strengthens some again, in fact it definitely does, reaching a stronger peak before it strikes Vietnam around the 15th of December. So obviously that's a long way out. And then another typhoon appearing out of seemingly nowhere there, very far to the east, over the easternmost Micronesian islands by the looks of things. And actually, that could be two typhoons simultaneously existing in the month of December. Now that would be a turn up for the books but certainly can't be ruled out. And this coral sea system gets even wackier. Look at this. Delivers gale force winds. It turns post-tropical all the way down the coast of eastern Australia, right down to the southeastern tip of New South Wales. So even Sydney could be in for tropical storm force winds. I don't know whether it would be actually tropical by that point, but certainly something to really watch there on that GFS model as this situation develops. I think it will change, and I don't think those areas will be affected but for as long as it stays like that on the model run it has to be considered talk about all of this on our discord server discord.gg slash force 13 for tropical weather and general weather chat with thousands of members from all around the world on this day you may remember it after many days um really leaving us guessing with enormous cloud tops typhoon komori finally came out of its shell and peaked as a category four shortly before striking the philippines in that crazy late season shenanigans that occurred in 2019 mainly in the western pacific and the north indian ocean we had 6a there as well which was about to become cyclone pawan very far to the west in the arabian sea on this day four years ago and of course, we covered both of those storms on Force 13 back then as well. Back to today then, there's still time for the Atlantic or the Eastern Pacific, even though it's out of season now. Vince is the next name in the Atlantic, and Selma is next in the Eastern Pacific. Of course, the Central Pacific, the next name there is Hone, and looking back at the 2019 version, it still would have been Hone, because that's how long we've been waiting. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Jellowat, and in the North Indian Ocean, it looks like we are about to see the formation of Michong. In the Southern Hemisphere, the Australian region's next name is Jasper. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, the first name on the list will be Alvaro, and in the South Pacific, it will be Nat. Whether this one gets that name or a different name, depending on where it forms, remains to be seen. 